Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wetlasting. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at cooling the computer. So let's dive right into it. First, you have to understand why there is an need. Basically, it's because of physics. There is a law and it's a physical law. You can't break it. Is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Basically, what that means is, let's say you put 100 watts of electricity in your computer it's becoming 100 watts of heat that is coming out of it on the other end. So because there is no motion, nothing is moving as in like your CPU does not move from one place to another or even the hard disk platter that are uh, moving that is moving in the same sealed location. So overall it gets hot and it gets hot directly proportional to the amount of electricity it is consuming. So let's say you have a computer that consumes, let's say a low power PC that consumes 60 watt, 60 watt of heat. You have a PC that is like, you know, thread ripper, it consumes 250 watt. You have 250 watt of heating element basically. So for that reason, every component PC that consumes electricity gives out that amount of heat. So just to make sure this is the source of heat is the electricity that it, that, it, that is being directly used so we have to make sure we remove it why do you want to remove it first equipment safety you don't want your ic's to you know burn out and things like that and there are many ic's in your motherboard processor uh, in your graphics card so it's not just like one thing has to be cool like you can't be in a scenario where okay you cooled your uh, cpu but your ram got you know over fried so you have to make sure that overall the system is cool because every ic is susceptible to it so and not to mention equipment safety is very crucial like uh, xbox is famous for this red ring of death and uh, many people solved this by you know basically roasting it and that was done because the heat sink that they applied into it was not adequate so you can see that in the next generation of xbox they have like gigantic heat sink because they learned from it and uh, they roasted it because uh, the motherboard bent so they had to heat it up again to bend it again so it starts to make contact with the heat sink so suffice to say thermal management is a very crucial aspect of it then what do we use it that's your problem you have heat how do we solve it first we use heat sinks plus heat pipes then we have something like this AIO all in one cooling solutions basically a liquid system that is everything is uh, sold to you as a package where you have radiator pump uh, cooling block and the everything fluent uh, fluid everything is done in it and we use fan to do the final heat dissipation so you the heat sink you see all it does is take the heat from the hot spot as in the processor or the GPU and then puts it in a larger spot how the heat is removed that's based on the fans so if you have a large heat sink but very little amount of fan or no fan you may not get adequate cooling so we come to the issues that what are the issues that we have to face this is very crucial nowadays simply because of the trend to make very very high-end processors where there are processors that can consume upwards of 300 watts of power uh, AMD Threadripper specifically and not to mention the trend to put i9 in laptop which without adequate cooling is flat out useless because it thermal throttles so badly that it performs uh, more or less like an i7 and the reason for that the core reason is that what's called slow thermal conductivity basically this thermal uh, graph should help you understand this very accurately is that if you have a heat sink and you have a heat source it does not travel to and uh, you know at the every corner of the system instantaneously it takes time and the problem is as long as taking time it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter provided the heat load is constant so let's say you have a 50 watt processor it's giving out that 50 watt constantly okay Pro no problem with that but point is this place will become 50 degrees Celsius supposed to be but this place will remain as cool as ambient temperature because this is not sinking the heat it takes time the material no matter what material you use either you use copper or aluminum has a time it cannot just go to like you know full conductivity in zero to hundred percent in you know one second it takes time now problem is that that it inherently ends up in a scenario where this spot overheats even though you have so much cooling area this spot overheats to solve that we use what's called heat pipe as you can see in things like this now you might see AMD processor which is like one small block but why it has heat pipes for simple reason they'll run the heat frame from here to edges basically because heat pipe have fluid that is moving up and down it's conducting heat much more faster than the passive conduction of heat so this is a crucial factor that's why heat pipe heat pipe everybody is uh, going on about heat pipes like you know it has six heat pipes it has fat heat pipes it has like you know slim heat pipes that's the reason if you don't use fluid 
and if any fluid could be any fluid that is specific for that purpose if you rely on metal directly will it work yes absolutely if you have low heat load that's more than enough but if you have high heat load like a lot of heat coming from a small point as in like amd thread ripper is giving off 300 watts of heat you need to dissipate that heat quickly otherwise it will burn itself out now don't worry it won't actually burn itself out modern processes have a lot of fail safe they will simply cut the power so and this heat pipe is becoming so efficient that we also use in your laptop so your radiator could be here and the heat pipe is conducting the heat from the cpu from the gpu to your radiator now this is how we do uh, air cooling so in air cooling you have to understand it's very cheap and it's very effective i told you like if you have a small heat load you don't even need fans like let's say very small load as in like 20 uh, pentium 4 pentium 3 kind of system where it's very low you know thermal requirement you just put a heat sink you don't have to do worry about anything and earlier heat sinks uh, did not used to come with uh, what we call heat pipes and as you can see in this one this was the common heat sink we used to use does not have any heat pipe so the core of this system will get hot but the outer ring will not be cooling because of that reason so in recent years there have been a lot of uh, you know cheap effective heat sinks uh, that have been flooded the market and you can cheap out on this provided if they are not selling uh, you know overselling it basically they if they sell you something that you know it's a tdp of 300 watt and it barely has capacity of 50 watts then you are screwed but uh, if if they say it's 100 watt and you have to choose between cooler master or deep cool deep cool gives you cheap one by deep cool you won't regret it and fan of course it's up to you but fan generally don't break down even cheap chinese one so there have been a lot of improvement and the noise complaint that people used to have from things like this is gone because basically we started to use bigger fan 120 millimeter fan is the big standard right now and you can go a bit higher than that what's called 140 millimeter but it does not give you that uh, night and day difference between small fan to 120 millimeter fan so that's a day and night difference the noise level would be like very little and if you go from 120 to 140 the gap is not that much so this is about air cooling so at this point you can buy a cooler master and forget about it you should buy over uh, buy these things not because of the money reason simply if you are a pc enthusiast and if you want to upgrade your pc you can buy these things and these are future proof and if they are buying them from a branded company they generally sell you adapter kits let's say there is a new processor they, they will sell you just adapter kit just to adapt it so for that reason uh, this can be like your cabinet it can be uh, you know working for years and years and years and decades and decades then we come to the liquid cooling now what you have to understand this and liquid cooling has no uh, core difference the only difference is that liquid was in the heat pipe here the liquid is either the water or oil that they are moving through the radiator it's basically the same thing only heat pipe used to be like very strong very rigid like they are structural component of laptops some laptops so suffice to say uh, this uses pipe and instead of having you know heat pipes they are using the water that is running in them to carry the heat around the core benefit of it the the first benefit you will see is it's called better exhaust basically your heat is, let's say this is your processor it's heating up if you have an air cooler it's coming out of like that and it's just heating everything around it now if you have air uh, liquid cooler because the radiator is designed in such a way that it has you know very uh, slim factor is the air is just directly goes out it's exhausting the heat directly so basically this whole area is not getting heating up and this example is even better as you can see like this whole area is very cool because the heat from the cpu is not coming off it's coming off directly there and directly being exhausted so better exhaust is a really uh, core selling factor of liquid cooling and you have to understand many of that big beefy air coolers they put a lot of stress on your motherboard basically as you can realize we generally have motherboard not lying down like this so it's a big heavy block like this coming out of it it's putting a lot of stress now it's not an issue uh, but you have to be mindful it might become a headache if you have a really really big uh, you know powerful cpu so liquid cooling starts to make more sense in that sort of scenario but do uh, be mindful not every cabinet supports this so do check your manufacturer then we come to the new king in town oil cooling now oil cooling was have been done by enthusiast hackers overclockers for decades but it never caught on simply because it did not provide any unique or any actual benefit however nowadays it's making a comeback not for consumer market 
but for server industry as you can see in this one and intel just i will link the description below link the description below basically link would be in the description and intel run a basically a test with uh, this sort of system where they had 42u basically the unit 42 unit system where they had two 42 units system, one cooled by air one cooled by oil now oil has many 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 advantage first it's fully summer so there is no humidity that is touching your components humidity do cause your components to fail prematurely because of corrosions benefit number one second because it's fully submerged there is no hot spot there is no spot where like let's say your cpu got too hot and it started to bend the motherboard like in playstation and it does happen in server it's not too often they generally design it well but things like that happen here no worry about that second uh, you have to understand packing efficiency is very crucial the land area that you have to buy for your server it's very crucial like you want to take as much money out of it as quickly as possible for that reason you want to put as much server as you can in the square hectare that you bought so for that reason packing efficiency of this is also higher not because you can't pack air cooling as close to each other as like this is just simply in air cooler it will get roasted by itself the air does not conduct heat away quickly enough and low noise now this is crucial there are documentaries about like people going behind the scene of google and you will see them wearing air protections it's loud idiotically loud the fan uh, the small fa form factor fans they are ludicrously loud ludicrously inefficient ludicrously expensive for this reason i expect to see this slowly will catch on it it won't catch on like you know today and tomorrow every pro uh, next gen servers are built like this but it will catch on sooner or later because now intel has jumped into it so you, since they make the largest amount of processor and samsung so you have to realize like there is a very good trend about it and you can do it in your home also but it does not serve that much function so the very fact that this allows you to have uh, quiet basically you don't need hearing protection have to have long uh, component sealed off from environment basically no humidity will damage it awesome so all things considered oil cooling will become the next de facto and specifically because we are going to use a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and things like that we need to pack them in small places you can't have a artificial intelligence that has to communicate longer uh, distance not because like you know uh, there is a issue that we can't do that is simply because of the lag and you might be like okay server to server the lag is not there yes it's there if you are creating a neural network the nodes from each network is acting in a virtual world now that virtual world is limited by the connection speed of these things and if you have like this one here another five meters away there is a five meter time lag now it's minuscule however imagine if you have hundreds of them now you're realizing uh, communication from one point to another point could have as high as like uh, you know 0.1 millisecond or 0.7 millisecond or sometimes one whole millisecond so packing efficiency is very crucial for artificial intelligence high-end artificial intelligence and google is also investing in uh, a lot of money into making sure they can make oil cooled servers so this was my presentation on PC cooling solutions. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please like. If it didn't, don't worry about it. Dislike it. Leave a comment. And uh, what would you want to see in the next episode of Computer Wednesday? And subscribe. Press the bell icon as I make video every day. And as always, thanks for watching.